I'm Alex Ponegovs. I'm a professional pickleball player. Hi, I'm Alex Ponegov. I'm pro corn caller. Okay! I'm Alex Ponegov. I'm pro at ping pong. I'm Alex Ponegov, professional poker player, gonna play Hungry K. I'm in the big blind. I'm what tournament? <laughs> in the 1500 milli maker. Oh, okay. I know Ponegov's playing the 100k, but I need to make my big blind, so we'll resume this in a second. It's day two of the milli maker, and we are chip leading our table. We are getting close to the bubble, and I have a pretty good amount of chips, and I've been bullying people, I would say. Our first relevant hand is up against a self-proclaimed athlete who, uh, in my books, is a swordfish. He's pointy, just not really at the poker table. So I look down at ace-king with the ace of clubs, and I raise the 4,000. It folds them in a small blind, and basically what happened, he meant to go walk into the aquarium at Walmart, but instead ended up in Shark Tank. So he thought it folded to him, so he threw out chips, not realizing I raised. So he calls, by accident. This is relevant because it means his cards are basically any two, really. We don't know what he has because um, he could really have just made a mistake here. The flop comes queen, ten, deuce, all clubs. He checks and I bet 4,000. And he raises the 8,000, which is uh, kind of a weird play. The turn is a nine of clubs and he bets 12,000. At this point, I basically have the nut flush. I only lose two jack eight of clubs and king jack of clubs. Um, I decide to just call because we want to make him keep betting. Uh, he could be bluffing and he could also be value betting a king or a jack of clubs and we can get more money in on a river. The river is the 10 of diamonds. Now, this is pretty difficult for me to understand what's going on because we have to keep in mind he can have any two cards. He goes for a 24,000 bet and I take a while and debate if I want to go all in or not. What I was thinking is, given he accidentally called my race, he can actually have a lot of um, very strong hands here, like all the full houses, 10-9, queen-10, um, deuces. He can technically even have like the straight flushes. And I don't think if I shove, I ever get called by words. I take a long time and I finally call. He shows ace-nine offsuit and then gets a bit angry that I took so long to call with the not flush draw, really not realizing that I was basically just debating going all in or not. That gives us a pretty big pot, and now we are commanding chip leader at the table going into the bubble. We won a couple of pots, got up to like around 200,000 in chips, and then this hand happened. We have a uh, French baguette tester all the way from uh, Paris that uh, raises from early position. We flat ace nine suited of diamonds in the small blind, and the big blind calls. Uh, the flop is king queen deuce. It goes check, check, check. The turn is the jack of diamonds, so I pick up a flush draw and a straight draw. And I bet 22,000, uh, which is basically pot size. And the big blind folds, and the baguette tester uh, instantly makes it 45,000, which uh, is an odd play. Could have really strong hands, could also just be herp derp, you know, not knowing what he's doing exactly. Uh, I was debating going all in, but in the end I ended up just calling because uh, the table is really good. We don't really need to take these very big pots uh, aggressively. We can still hit our hand and make, you know, we have the right odds. Uh, the river is a six. I check and he goes and checks back. So I'm thinking I'm winning for sure. Show my ace nine and he just shows up with ace deuce offsuit, which was uh, quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. In my books, he's an angler fish because he just looks like he's terrifying, but he's actually harmless. To 6,000 from hijack, and I look down on ace five of clubs in a small blind. Uh, we are pretty even on chips, and we're close to the bubble, so I decide to just call because we don't want to play big pots out of position. Uh, we were around 70 big blinds effective. Uh, the big blind folds, and the flop is jack seven three with the jack of clubs. I check, and he bets 5,000, uh, which is basically a bit too small on this board, but not too bad. I have an option of check raising, but I think in this situation, I don't mind just calling because it's such a small bet, and I can just try to uh, represent a lot of hands on later streets. The turn is the eight, 
and I check. I did consider leading this, but I didn't think it's very necessary the way this guy was playing. Um, angler, angler fish tend to be kind of uh, two-dimensional and play very obvious, so he checks back. The river is now a queen. Um, once he checks the turn, he basically un uh, caps his range, which allows me to represent a lot of hands. I can have two pairs sets, I can have 10-9 suited, straights, uh, a lot of very strong hands. So I go for a 22,000 bet on the river, and he starts staring me down and tells me in French, oh, you always have it, you always have the better hand. <laughs> and I kind of obviously laugh in my head, but you know, keep my mean face on. I have ace high, I know he has some type of fair pair. He ends up folding and I don't show it because it's not necessary. I knew I can keep getting the best of them during this bubble. In case you didn't know, um, I decided before coming to Vegas that I'm just going to be giving away percentages to close friends. Uh, I used to do this for charity in the past, but I want to help out some of our friends that we love and family. So I gave 5% of the Millie Maker to my wife's best friend and bridesmaid, Christina. Should he win, I can get 5% of his winning. So here is me wishing him the best of luck today. Bear Uzi, you got this. I have faith in you, sending you all the good vibes and all the good luck your way. Woo! <laughs> First place is going to be uh, 1 million or more. So if I win, uh, she ends up getting like $50,000. That's going to be amazing. She's a really, really good friend of ours and I hope I can make her rich. This hand was up against a sea lion. Uh, an American player who just moved to the table was very quiet, but I got to uh, ask him a couple of questions and uh, made him laugh a little bit so I can get a bit of better read on him. Um, he seems to be quite decent um, and we look at pocket queens under the gun and I raised to 8,000. He's an under the gun one and makes it 22,000. We are around 10 away from the money, so this is already a pretty tricky situation. We started down 50 big blinds effective, so it uh, could be a very big pot. It folds back to me and I call. His three bet range here should be very, very tight. Um, he shouldn't have too many bluffs. Actually, my queens block a lot of his bluffs, which would be some stuff like queen jack suited, queen 10 suited, ace queen off, and king queen off. I just call. The flop comes 865 with three hearts. I check. He C bets 12,000, which is one fourth of the pot. I decide to check raise both for protection and value in some situations. I did not have the Queen of Hearts, which makes this a bit more of a difficult situation, but it's a board that actually favors us a lot more since we have all the sets and a lot more flushes that call preflop. So the check raise makes a lot of sense. I go for a 40,000 raise, he calls. The turn is the 10 of spades, I check, and he goes all in for 110,000, which is pot, nearly pot sized. I painfully end up folding because I really don't think there's enough bluffs in these spots. Um, first, we can be way ahead, uh, way behind aces and kings. We could be beating some hands, but generally they have a lot of equity, like ace king, ace queen with one heart. And this table was too good for me to take these type of situations. I can just fold and find much better, situ uh, much better spots later on since we're on the bubble and everyone is playing pretty scared except this guy. At this point, the bubble just burst, everyone's in the money, and you can tell people are starting to go a bit crazy. I look up down at pocket eights and I raise to 10,000. It folds to the big blind, um, who's a older Asian lady that hasn't played many hands, but you can tell she got, you know, she got a bit of emotions in her because she's been pretty frustrated with, with one of the other players on the table. She goes all in for 90,000. I look back at my pocket eights, and usually I should always be calling here. I take a bit of time. I wasn't sure if I want to really flip in the spot since a lot of time we're up against two overcards or obviously some hands that beat us. But as I'm looking at my chips, I notice that the rooster is, is with me. I got the rooster booster on my side. So eventually I make the call. She flips over, ace three offset, boom. We're in great shape. The, the board runs out well and we end up picking up a pretty big pot. And right after this, I actually decided to give my rooster away to my friend, Alex Bonaco, who just entered the 100K. This was a decision that was based purely off the fact that he's playing a really big tournament and I want to give him all the good luck I can. Yeah, yeah. I give you my lucky cock. Oh, good luck nice. in the 100k. I pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, man. This is, this is this great. Is my yeah. <laughs> going into the 6k uh, level. Um, 
feels really hard to give up my lucky cock, but he is playing 100k, so, you know, after all, we, we have to make the sacrifice. We have to make the sacrifice. <laughs> we wish Ponaka the best of luck. We look down at King Ten offsuit with the King of Diamonds in the big line. It folds to Masato Yokosawa, who raises from the cutoff to 8,000, and I call. The flop is the Queen 9 8 rainbow. I check E at 6,000, and I check raise to 30,000. I have a gut shot, I have one over card, and this board uh, favors me since I have a lot more two pairs. I have all the straights, and even though he has all the over pairs, in general, I'm gonna be ahead on this board. He calls. The turn is a deuce of diamonds, which puts out a flush draw. I have the king of diamonds, which is a pretty good card to have, because if I go for a really big bet here, it means he has less combos to continue with, like king jack of diamonds, king ten of diamonds, king nine of diamonds, ace king of diamonds, and all those hands. I also still block straights, I block strong king queens, so he's gonna have a lot of hands that just have to fold here, like ace jack, king jack, ace ten, ten nine, ten eight are gonna be in a pretty tough decision, uh, have a really tough decision. So I bet 80,000, which is basically pot size, and he calls relatively quickly. R the river is the deuce of spades, and at this point, I have one of the worst hands to bluff because I actually block the hands that would instantly fold on the river. You don't want to have the king of diamonds because that means if I go all in, he can't have king jack of diamonds, he can't have king ten of diamonds, which would instantly fold. So eventually, I just check, he ends up going all in, and I fold. It's okay, I like my play on the turn, it's still a very profitable bluff, and eventually, uh, in the long run, we'll always be winning the pot on the turn a lot more than we lose it. It was really fun to play with Masato. His table pre presence is hilarious. He's very creative and inter interactive with everyone. He was filming his own stuff. We actually ended up sending this video to him. Maybe he'll use it, I'm not sure. But it was really good footage. As you can see, after he wins the pot on a river, he gives us a nice little smile and his trademark goofy stuff that he likes to do. Shortly after losing a pot against Masato, Alex Foxen moves to my right. I know Alex Fox in a bit, we've played a lot in the past, and uh, we were chatting it up. It folds them in a small blind, and he limps to 6k. I decide to raise to 22,000 by pushing in the chips awkwardly with my backhand. It looks kind of funny, he even smirked a little bit, because, I mean, I was planning to do a lot more stuff later on. Uh, luckily, he decides to just go all in for 220,000. I double check my cards. I know there's no way I can fold here. He can have ace king, ace queen sometimes, but he's also going to have a lot of hands that like dominate. I end up calling. He has ace five, and we have this little clip to show um, the run out. Unfortunately, I couldn't record it myself, but luckily, someone at the table did for us. Um. I wasn't feeling 100% because I don't have the booster with me at the table. I felt like I'm missing a part of me. But we kept playing. I had around 500,000 chips. I'm doing really good in this tournament. The hijack raises to 17,000 with a very large stack. She's in the cutoff and raises to 43,000. I look down at Ace King of Spades on the button and I re-raise to 100,000. I believe I made a mistake here by raising too big to begin with. I don't necessarily need to go this big. Um, I was debating some other options, but I don't think I have many. I think for value, we need to always 4-bet here. It folds back to her, and she ends up going all in for 500,000. I believe I should consider folding here. Um, this might be a little mistake for me playing more online. I don't think people really build bluff 5-betting four-bet, ranges here. It's nearly always queens plus and ace king. I even think queens might just flat sometimes. So unfortunately, I called and I regret it. She shows me aces, so I look like a dum dum right away. I was factoring in that there's already 120,000 dead in a pot, and I was pretty getting pretty good odds in case she has ace king. We could be just free rolling her with our suited hand, which could have been the case because the flop came seven three three with two spades, giving me a bit of hope. But unfortunately, the runout did not bring another spade and I ended up losing a 1.1 million pot at 4k, 8k level. Can I be lucky? Oh, yes. oh there's always a swell. Good game. Oh, yes, baby, baby. Yes, yes. I just lost the oh. maker and I'm sad. I'm walking back to the car and I just look at my phone. I'm curious what's going on in 100k and I see this ridiculous hand. In all honesty, this is one of the sickest hero calls I have ever seen and for Ponakov to pull it off, in the 100k against one of the best players, Michael Adamo, I needed to know what happened. So I asked Ponakov, hey, how did you make this call? 
he refused to tell me. But it's okay, we got the rooster on the table. So I had an exclusive interview with the rooster, and here's what happened. The flop and turn call are pretty standard. There's nothing very tricky about those, but the river call is where it's very complicated. Apparently, according to the rooster, on the river, after Adama put in a big bet, he licked his lips while staring at the rooster. Now this is a fake tell, because Michael Adamo is actually vegan, therefore there's no reason for him to actually be excited about a rooster. And the rooster figured this out and whispered into Alex Panakov's ear, telling him, this guy is bluffing for sure. Panakov makes the call with just pocket sevens on a terrifying board. And he ends up winning against a huge bluff by Michael at Adamo. And this was a big game changer because now Panakov is the chip leader, Adamo is super short, and he's been on a roll. And to put him down in his place like that and to take over the lead means there's no one to stop him anymore. Now, if you're wondering what happened after, you better make sure you watch part two because we're gonna get exclusive interviews with the legend himself, Alex Bonacco. Mm -hmm.